Today I will be sharing an inspirational story with you. A girl who chased after her dreams, dreams so large that other people were intimidated. Despite the fact that there was a lack of support from others, as well as family issues occurring, her setbacks never stopped her from reaching her destination. This story focuses on a young adult, where her experiences in the Brockton community pushed her towards her dream of becoming a dance teacher. Today I'm here interviewing my best friend Jessica Nash, where she had many setback, setbacks that actually influenced her career path, but I shouldn't really refer to them as setbacks because her setbacks actually defined her success of who and what she does today. So my best friend is a dancer and she continues this dance profession today. Um, so could you tell us how long have you been dancing for? I have been dancing since I was seven, so I'm 23 now, um, 16 years, and I've been teaching for four at the studio I grew up at. I was one of those like kids who didn't like any sports that I played. I tried t-ball, I like sat in the dirt, I didn't really do anything. Um, and then I had two older cousins who grew up dancing at Miss K's and like I always would be in my living room like, Mom and Dad, come watch this dance I made up. And it was always these like cheesy little dances like on the table, on the chairs, like the couch and stuff. In front of the mirror. Yeah, yeah. of course. <laughs> and um, they were like, why don't you try dance? Like that's like the only thing you seem to like so far, so why don't you try it? And um, I did, and when I, I was only seven when I started, and it was like super fun. Like it was like, oh yeah, tap shoes. Like you know when you get your first pair of tap shoes, like that's such a big deal. And three years in, um, Miss K asked my mom to bring me in for an audition for their competition team, their youngest competition team, and um, I was on that for the next seven years while I danced wow. all through high school. I went to Brockton High and then I found out that there were halftime dancers and we danced during the football games which was awesome and we danced during the parades um, with the hooplas. I got to Bridgewater and that's where I feel like the inspiration for like the dance career started. Um, I started as an early education major and within a semester I realized I, I wasn't for me. I took one dance class while I was there in the fall and I was like this is like the only class I like out of the five classes that I'm in like there has to be something else I can do. So that's when I talked to, I think I talked to Dr. Moses, um, the head of the department at Bridgewater. And I was like, I'd like to have an audition to be a dance major. I said, I think that's, I think that's what I want to do. And um, she gave me a private audition, which was the first time I ever did anything like that. So that was crazy. And um, right away, she said, yeah, we'd love to have you as part of the program. It's awesome to see like how my education paid off and how now I'm teaching six classes a week um, on the books, getting paid for it, and knowing that someday I'll have my own studio. Or maybe I'll run this studio if I'm lucky enough. <laughs> Traveled to Miss K's School of Dance, where Jess is a valued employee here at the studio. Let's take a look inside. Hi! Hi! How are you? Good, how are you? Hi, hey, Ben. Good. What you doing? So, on a normal day here, um, I usually get here about an hour, an hour and a half before all the kids come in. Um, I got my attendance sheet, I check the schedule. Um, when the parents start to get here, I take payments, I greet the kids um, when they walk in. Um, we usually go in, we warm up, we learn the routines, we go across the floor. Uh, Tuesdays I teach three different classes. All three of them are dance team classes, so 
the dances that they're learning now, they'll be doing in competitions in April. To see myself now as the teacher is pretty cool when I never thought like 10 years ago that I'd ever be teaching here. Jessica's dance ability and her successes were not handed to her. She suffered from several setbacks and family issues that delayed her career path. No one, I guess, can prepare themselves for finding out that someone in your family is addicted to drugs. It had a very negative impact on us. But in the, in the same sense, it, it sort of brought us together. Um, because you had to, we had to rely on each other the whole time to get through it and to move on each day and not to dwell on it. Even though there were days when it was a lot harder than other days and um, days where we thought like we weren't going to get past it. I was the first one that found it, found out. I actually found the drugs, which is crazy if you think about it. I was only, I was only 18. That really stuck out because once I figured out what it was, it was just like, what, like, what do I do now? How do I, what do I go from here? I was with my mom one day and we found out that my brother had overdosed and he was in the hospital. And um, we both were like, we were mad, you know what I mean? Like sad, but mad at the same time. Dr. Jody Weber, um, in her senior seminar class has you do a project um, to apply for like a fake grant. So if we like had to get a grant, how we would do it. And um, we had to come up with a project. You had to do a description. You basically had to apply for the grant, but not actually send it in. So my idea was to do a project called Damaged by Addiction. It was a collaboration between families of drug addicts and dance. What I wanted to do was target men and women of all ages and rehab centers. Um, all around mass and I wanted to create a piece or like a show so like say an hour-long show um, of all different types of dancers about how we were affected um, by loving a drug addict. I feel so scared and underprepared when I'm next to you feel so cold and overexposed when I'm next to you. I feel so weak, I can hardly speak when I'm next to you. I feel so scared. It's awesome to see like how my education paid off and how now I'm teaching six classes a week um, on the books, getting paid for it, and knowing that someday I'll have my own studio. If you're doing what you love, it'll never be work. Right, so. exactly. And in the end, it's not about the money. It's about what you're passionate about doing, what you love doing, and that's what makes you happy. It's exactly.